You know, so many things in life actually grow in what is called an exponential way. This is where, in fact, things either growing really, really, really fast or things are diminishing really, really slowly. And so, for example, if you have radioactive substances, they might have a, a decaying that has a half-life. That's actually exponential decay. Or in the happier event, because you don't really want to have radioactive stuff, in the happy event where you have lots of money in a bank, in fact, the money quite often through compounding is growing exponentially. So things that grow really, really dramatically, things that decay off, sometimes follow exponential growth. Really, really important idea. So what is an exponential function? Well, that's a, a function that can be described in very, very easily by saying that y equals some constant raised to a variable power. So the key thing here to notice is that the, the variable x or it could be something more elaborate, like x plus 7 or x cubed or something. But that's happening in the exponent. And this b, this base, can be any positive number at all except 1. OK, so with those rules, that's what we mean by an exponential function. OK, so we have the, the variable in the exponent, and we have a constant here as a base. And that constant has to be positive and not equal to 1. OK, now, with those as the rules, let's just practice and see if we can identify exponential functions. So this is like a little game show. Is it an exponential function? Welcome, welcome, everyone, to the wonderfully popular game show that's growing exponentially, by the way. Our viewership, huge ratings to the roof. And the question is, is the function an exponential function or not? Let's take a look at the first one. y equals 2x squared. Well, let's see. This actually is a polynomial function because it's x to the power 2 in this case, or some fixed number up here that's positive and it's an integer. But it is sadly no, not an exponential function because I need to have a constant raised to a variable power. And here I see a variable raised to a constant power. So this is not one. This is just a good old-fashioned polynomial, and it's the square polynomial that we know and love. All right, uh, how about this one right here? y equals the quantity negative 2 to the x. Well, I'm loving the fact that there's a variable in the exponent. Great. But the caveat is that the base can't be negative. In fact, this is a really, really, really bizarre thing to look at. If you think about it for a second, this is not even going to spit out real numbers all the time. Just imagine, for example, if x were the number a half. A half, remember, means square root when we have a half in the exponent. And the square root of negative 2 is not even a real number. We can't even compute it. So we never want to have negative values in the base. That was a huge thing. So that one definitely is not an exponential function. We're not looking so good, are we? What about this one? y equals 1 to the 2x power. Again, I'm loving the fact that there's a variable in the exponent. In this case, it's 2x. That's fine. The problem is we just have a 1 here. And remember that the base has to be a positive number that's different from 1. So in fact, this is not an exponential function. In some sense, if you think about it, when you put in different values for x, this is just a constant function. Because 1 to any power is 1, so this is just y equals 1. So it's flatlined at 1. So not an exponential function. We want things growing or falling. Or we, want we want drama. We want drama. And this is not dramatic. This is constant. All right, so this is not going well. Let's take a look at this. So here's our next candidate, y equals 2 to the x. Well, notice this is a very, very happy function in the sense that we have a variable in the exponent, and we've got a base that is positive and not equal to 1. This is an exponential function, the first one we've seen. Congratulations, congratulations. What about this? y equals 2 to the negative x. Well, this looks maybe problematic, but notice that everything is cool because the exponent is a variable. I admit it's negative x, but it's still varying. And the 2 is a constant that's greater than 0 and not equal to 1. This one actually is an exponential function. And finally, what about this one? Well, this is a crazy looking one. y equals 1 third to the x plus 4. That's a variable exponent. And notice that the base is a positive number, and it's not equal to 1. It can be less than 1. It can be a positive number less than 1, like a third but it can't equal 1. So this is a no, 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 and this is a yes, yes, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I'm loving the exponential function. I hope you are too. Now, what can you do with exponential functions? Well, as with any functions, you can actually evaluate. Let's just practice evaluating some exponential functions to remind ourselves of some of the arithmetical rules of the road. So suppose that I, I have a function, which I'm writing as f of x now. f of x equals 3 to the x power. 
k sub fx equals 3 to x power. That's an exponential function, so the right form, so I'm very happy. And I want to look at f of 2. Now, what does f of 2 mean? Well, you have to remember what this means. It means that wherever I see an x in this story, I'm going to replace it by 2. So what that means is that f of 2 is going to equal 3 raised to the 2 power, or 3 squared. And what's 3 squared? Well, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So in fact, if I evaluate this exponential function at 2, I see 9. Great. No problem. How about this one? The exponential function is f of x equals 4 to the negative x, and I want to evaluate this at 2. So I want to look at f of 2. Well, what would I do here? Well, now this actually is going to require us to, to think a little bit, and I want to write some stuff down here. So let's think about this together. F of 2. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it by 2. So I see 4 to the negative, and I see x, so I see 4 to the negative 2. Aha. Now I see a negative exponent. So how do I handle a negative exponent? Well, a negative exponent means I'm actually looking at a reciprocal. So this is actually a 1 over. So this equals 1 over 4 squared. So notice I took care of the negative sign by writing a reciprocal. And now the negative sign is gone. Look, ma, no negative. That's because I have a 1 over here, and I didn't have it here. And now I'm good to go, because I know how to deal with this. This is just 1 over 4 times 4, which is 16. So I see 1 16th. So in fact, what is uh, f of 2 if f of x equals 4 to the negative x? It equals 1 16th. You see how easy this is? No problem. Let's try one that may be a problem. So here's an exponential function, f of x equals 25 to the x power. And I want to evaluate this at the rational number 3 halves. So what does that mean? Well, f of 3 halves means wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in 3 halves. So 25 to the 3 halves. So now my exponent's a fraction. A moment ago, it was a negative number, which meant we take a reciprocal. Here, it's a fraction. What does that mean? It means that the denominator of the fraction is actually the root that I'm taking, and then the numerator is the power. So in fact, I could translate this into two equivalent ways. I could say, take 25 cubit and then take the square root. Now, of course, for square root, I'm not going to actually put the little 2 in there, but we understand that that 2 is actually sitting in there. Or I could do it another way. I could first take the square root of 25 and then take that answer and cube it. They both generate the, the same answer. It doesn't make a difference what order, whether I take the square root, then cube, or take the cube and then square root. The important thing is that the root is a square and the power is a cube in both cases. But order doesn't matter. So what should you do? Well, if you have a choice, and it's easy to evaluate, you make numbers smaller first. So you take the square root of 25, which is 5, and then you cube that. And what's 5 cubed? It's 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25 times another 5 equals 125. So f of, of 3 halves, in this case, is a very fancy way of just saying the number 125. No problem, no problem. OK, I want to try one more together because I know you love these things. These are like potato chips. You just can't have one. You always want a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to modify this one on the fly just to show you some love. Because really, technically, the way it's written here, it's going to be 1 to the x, which is just 1. It's not even an exponential function. So I'm going to make it a little bit more exciting. I'm going to put some parentheses. That's right. Free of charge, I'm putting in the parentheses. That's right. You're catching it. So I see f of x equals 1 half all to the x power. And I want to evaluate this at negative 3. So f of negative 3 equals, well, wherever I see an x, I'm going to put in negative 3. So I see the quantity 1 half to the negative 3. Well, we know how to deal with negative exponents. What that means is I'm going to invert. Now, there are a couple ways of thinking about inverting here. You could think about taking the 1 half and inverting it and just saying it's 2 cubed. And so that negative sign was dissipated by me flipping this. Or an equivalent way, if you'd rather do it this way, is just to really invert it, which is to say, I'm going to have 1 over 1 half cubed. But then when you invert and multiply here, you're going to get, again, 2 cubed. So all roads lead to 2 cubed in this particular case. And what's 2 cubed? It's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And so in fact, 
uh, f of negative 3 equals 8. Might kind of sound kind of funny, right? You're plugging a negative number into this thing and I'm getting 8? Yeah, because I'm taking 1 half, I'm taking its reciprocal, that takes care of the negative, which now is 2, and then I'm going to cube it, and so I get 8. No problem.